Now, to show that air can be compressed or expanded, I have here a, a syringe. You can push the air in or suck the air out. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it halfway and I'm going to close this end. So it's filled with, with air that's equal to the pressure in the outside room because we're going to change it. Now I can push on it. I can increase the, my pressure against this gas and increase the pressure of this gas. I can compress it. But it always tries to go back to its original state. It's pushing back. See? It's pushing back against me. But I can also expand it. I can pull this out and try to expand the gas. But it's trying to suck back to its original state as well. So, that is showing this one, that you can, uh, that you can compress or expand the gases. Now, with this one, we can see that the glass, the balloon is starting to fill up pretty good because we have heated up the gas. Now, I'm going to cool down the gas carefully by putting it in this water, trying not to break Thing, but I'm trying to cool down the gas carefully. It, the water will cool down this this flask. Oops! See now the now the balloon is starting to decrease again because I've cooled down the air that is in this glass flask. See, it's decreased. It's decreased its volume. It's decreased its pressure. Now, what do we mean by pressure? Pressure. Is, is a force that's pushing on a surface, any surface. Now this is a block of metal. It weighs the same no matter which way I hold it, this way, or this way, or this way. But if I hold it on the point, it really, really hurts. And that's because all this mass, all this weight, is pushing down at one single point. So that is the highest pressure. And in physics, we can talk about this, pressure is equal to the force divided by the area. So if you have a, the same force, it's the same weight. Force is weight. It's the force of the gravity pulling this thing down. It's pulling it down on my hand. It's the same force, but it's different areas. It's a small area. This bottom piece is a small area. And this large side is a large area. So if I have a large number here, if this number stays the same, but I have a large number here, then the pressure is less. But if I, this number is the same, but this is a smaller number, because a small area, then this pressure is much greater. So the air pressure works like that as well. Now to demonstrate some things, interesting things about air pressure, I'm going to show, I'm going to take a piece of paper and put it across these two books. Now, this is something kind of the way airplanes work. I take a straw and I'm going to blow air under the paper. Now the air pressure right now is under the paper and above the paper is the same. But if I blow air under the paper, it's going to reduce the air pressure because I'm kind of pushing the air out in many different directions. It's decreasing the volume of the air and it's, it's decreasing the air pressure. So the air pressure on top will push the paper down and we'll see that. Okay, I put the, I put the straw under the paper and blow. Okay. Now uh, that is kind of the way airplanes work. Airplanes work because the wing is a curved surface and the bottom part is flat. So the air going under and the air going above, the air going above has to spread out more than the air going under. And the air going above spreads out and has less pressure. And the pressure underneath is pushing it up. So it's like two things pushing each other. But one guy is really strong and pushing a lot harder than the other guy, so it's going to push this way. So the same thing with the air pressure. And that's how the airplanes have lift. That's how they, they fly up in the air. Because they have less air pressure on the top of the wings and more air pressure on the bottom of the wings. Now, another way we can, another interesting thing is air pushes against, to demonstrate air pushes against things, we're going to, we're going to drop this book. And the book is going to push the air out of the way. The book is pretty heavy. So I drop the book. It falls straight down. Now, I'm going to drop the paper. This paper is very light. It would try to fall straight down, but it can't because it tries to push the air out of the way, but it's really not strong enough. So it kind of uh, slides back and forth like this, as you will see. And it takes a lot longer to fall down. And so that's why people used to think that heavier objects fall faster than lighter objects. 
but that's not necessarily true, as I will now demonstrate. The book will push the air out of the way, and the paper is not stuck to the book at all, but it's just sitting on top of the book. And you will see they will fall exactly the same rate. See? So the, it's just that the paper is not able to push the air out of the way. So now, now one last thing I was going to show you was about the air pressure. Now here I have a ping pong ball and a funnel, and I'm going to blow in the funnel, and you will see the ping pong ball will not fall to the ground until I run out of breath. Let me do it one more time. It stays in here. Even though I'm blowing down on it, the air is flowing around the ping pong ball and then curling around, doing these little vortexes and things. And it's curling around and that's pushing up against the ball. And the air going around the ball on the top is moving very fast, so it's decreasing the pressure of the air. And the pressure below is higher, so it's pushing, keeping the ball up, up, until I stop blowing on it and then it falls down. And so, just to review what we studied today, we can show that the, we've shown that the gases will take up space. We blew up the balloon to show the gases take up space. Um, the gases have mass. We haven't uh, demonstrated this, but you will just have to believe that. Um, we could demonstrate this because we could weigh, if we had a scale, we could take a balloon and we could weigh the balloon first and then uh, blow it up and then weigh the balloon again. If we had an accurate scale, we could measure that gases have mass. Um, gases push against things. We've shown that pretty pretty well. They exert a pressure on things. We've talked about what pressure is and a formula for, for calculating the pressure. Heating up the gas increases the pressure and the volume. We've shown that with this, this. And we've shown the opposite, that if you cool down the gas, you decrease the volume and decrease the pressure. And we've shown that gases can be compressed and expanded. Thank you for listening today. 